Hi, I'm Shelly from Matant Quilting, and today I'm going to teach you how to attach the ends of your bias binding. That means that I'm going to show you how to take something like this, a pile of bias binding, and attach it to something like this. So this is a doable duffel that is in progress, and this is the front of the bag. And at this stage in the pattern, what I need to do is attach the bias binding that I have here to the interior of the bag front. And I'm going to do that by stitching around the perimeter of the bag front. So to do this, I'm going to need a few tools and notions. First of all, you're going to notice that I've used a lot of pins and I've done that uh, to keep this bias binding folded in half, but without the need of actually pressing this fold right here. With bias binding, you want to keep that fold nice and loose so that you can manipulate it as needed. So I'm going to need a bunch of pins for that. I'm also going to need a narrow ruler and a rotary cutter. Those two go hand in hand. <laughs> I'm going to need a temporary marking tool and I really like using the sew line error erasing pen. This is my favorite non-permanent marking tool. A seam ripper is just always a good idea to have on hand. You're going to need some scissors for trimming and I really like to use this by Annie's um, stiletto and pressing tool. And I'll show you how to use that in just a few moments. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to take my pile of <laughs> bias binding and what I need to do is lay the cut edge or the raw edge of the binding and match it up with the top of the bag along the edge of the uh, bag front. I'm going to leave maybe like a three or four inch tail and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stitching at this point, so beyond the handle. I'm not going to start stitching over here. I'm going to stitch over here when I'm already past the handle. I'm going to take this whole unit to my sewing machine and I'm going to carefully and slowly, while breathing, <laughs> maintain a quarter inch seam allowance as I stitch this binding down to the edge of the bag front. And I'm going to do that all the way around the bag until I come back up around this side and I get back to the second handle. So when I have done stitching all the way around all four corners, I'm going to come back around and I'm going to stop stitching before I touch this handle. So let me take that to the sewing machine. Um, if you want, you could pin this or uh, clip it in place, but I don't really find that that's necessary. So instead, I'm just gonna start like this, take the whole thing to my sewing machine, and I'm going to use a thread color it doesn't matter what thread color you use because it's not going to be visible when you finish the bag. So it doesn't really matter what thread color you're using at this point. And I'm going to use um, about a 2.0 millimeter stitch length. So that is kind of what I would use for regular piecing. I just need to make sure that the binding is going to be attached to the bag. So let me sew that down and then I'll come back when I've stitched all the way around the perimeter and I've come back over here. Okay, I'm back from sewing and you can see here that I have stitched a quarter of an inch all the way around the perimeter of the bag and I have started past the handle and I have stopped before I hit the handle again. So that means that I've got this whole section right here which has not been stitched down. And that's great because I'm going to use this area to join my two ends. Now you probably have lots of experience joining ends of say quilt binding, but bias binding is a little bit different and I'm going to show you how to, <laughs> how to tackle this. The good news is that it's not hard. And in fact, my friend Caitlin of Knot and Thread Design was the one who explained this method to me and it just made so much sense to me and it makes it so it's really easy to remember how to do this going forward. I've got four layers of fabric right here because I have a top tail, which has both a top layer of fabric and a bottom layer of fabric. And then I also have a bottom tail, which also has a top layer of fabric and a bottom layer of fabric. So I've got four layers right here. And I'm going to keep my tops together and my bottoms together. And I'm going to do that by marking the point at which the top tail <laughs> meets the bottom tail. Let me show you how that's done. So earlier I said that I would probably normally use my airline, uh, my Soline Air Erasable pen, but this actually makes a dark mark and I want something with a light mark so I'm using a different sew line pen that uses a light green um, I don't know pencil okay so here we go I've got my top tail and I'm going to take the mark where the top layer of fabric of my top tail 
meets the top layer of fabric of my bottom tail. So I'm gonna keep my two tops together. I'm gonna to do that by marking a point on the top layer of the bottom tail, right where that point meets the uh, fabric. So I'm hopeful, I'm just gonna make it really exaggerated so you can see. There's my point right there. Now I'm going to take the bottom layer of my top tail and I'm going to mark the point where it reaches the edge of the bag and I'm going to mark that on the bottom layer of the bottom <laughs> tail. So again, this mark would be right here. Here, I'll actually use the other one because that one will mark better. So that's where that line is. So you can see that this is the point where the this tail meets the edge of the bag and it's right here. Okay, I'm gonna unfold that. I'm going to unpin it and then I'm going to transfer this mark right here to the right side of my fabric. And I'm switching back and forth. Here I go with my green pencil now. I'm just going to notice where that mark is and I'm going to make that mark on the front of this bottom piece. If I flip it over, it's right here. Again, I'm gonna try and make a nice exaggerated mark so you can see that. Okay, so I have now transferred my marks from my top tail and I have matched them to my bottom tail. From here, I'm going to open up and get as much of this tail laying on my cutting mat as I possibly can. It's better if I have more room over on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that nice and flat. Now I'm going to take my narrow ruler and my narrow ruler has a mark on it uh, that is a 45, has several actually marks that are 45 degree angles. I'm going to take that 45 degree angle and lay it along the top edge of this piece of binding. And you'll see that when I do that, it connects the two lines. So I'm gonna draw a nice crisp line right there that goes from the two points that I marked on this piece of fabric. I wouldn't stress too much if, you're, <laughs> if it doesn't make a perfect diagonal line that's on a 45 degree angle. I would not worry about that for one second. I would just draw this line and then carry on. So now, the next thing to do uh, is we need to add some seam allowance to this because if we cut on this line and go to join it to the other tail, there's not gonna be any seam allowance and we will not be able to overlap those two tails. So we do not wanna cut on this line. Instead, we wanna cut 3 eighths of an inch away from this line. So oftentimes uh, when you're working with binding, you are sometimes working with quarter inch seams almost all the time in quilting, am I right? But for this project, because we're dealing with bias binding, we can get away with just a little bit narrower of a, a seam allowance because this binding is quite stretchy. So I have found that if I add a half inch to this dimension right here, then actually I end up with too much binding and it kind of gets bunched up when I go to sew it to the rest of the bag uh, front. So instead, I'm going to measure out three eighths of an inch away from this line by placing my ruler on that line right there. And then I'm just going to cut with my rotary cutter. Be brave. <laughs> so now I've cut that and I'm going to now join these two ends. So you'll see that there's a line and then there's a little bit more fabric that was added to that. That's going to allow us to actually sew these two bits together. So from here, I'm going to overlap these two and I'm going to pin them in place or use my uh, quilter's binding clips actually. I find those really handy for this job. And I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew one quarter of an inch away. I'm just gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance to sew across these two. So I'm gonna take this right here and I'm going to sew quarter of an inch away from that. That line will probably bisect this little valley right here and this little valley over here. If you find that um, your bag is kind of pulling on these two, what you can do is fold your bag front in half, get a little binding clip and clip it together. Now you should be able to take this to the sewing machine and the bag will not be pulling apart and you should not have any problems with that. So I'm gonna take this to the machine, sew my line, I'll be right back. Okay, I've just finished up with the sewing machine. I'm going to uh, remove that clip and I'm going to show you what I sewed here. So I sewed these two pieces together using a quarter inch seam. And let me just lay that down to make sure that in fact there is enough binding. And yes, indeed there is. 
But before I sew this final seam down, what I'm going to do is use my stiletto and pressing tool, and I'm going to press open this seam right here. That's exactly what this tool is designed for, for pressing open seams just at your workspace without having to go use your iron. I'm also going to trim off these two little dog ears because I don't need those, as cute as they are. Goodbye one, goodbye two. And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and finish this job by stitching from here to here. I do think it's a good idea to clip the binding at this point because I don't want it to shift or move. And one last crucial trick, make sure that you fold your handle webbings out of the way. You do not want to be sewing through those handles. You want them to be tucked away. So I'm going to take this and finish stitching a quarter inch seam along the top of this bag front. I've just finished up with the sewing for the last time. So as you can see here, I stitched a seam a quarter inch away from the edge of the bag. And I just did a couple of reinforcing stitches at the start and at the end, just to make sure that uh, the previous line of stitching was not going to come undone. And crucially, I did not stitch it down to my handles. So that always feels like a win. From here, I'm going to take this pile of bias binding, uh, which should be about half of what I started with, and I'm going to do the exact same thing to the bag back. So I think that you'll find that that makes a really cute <laughs> little bag. And this is actually part of the doable duffel, which is a pattern that I designed myself. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, then I think you might enjoy my online course called Duffel Master. So in Duffel Master, I teach you from start to finish, every step of the way, how to make a doable duffel. So this is a pattern that I designed myself and uh, it has a lot of really great features in that it has slip pockets and zippered pockets. It has a zippered pocket on the interior. It uses hardware, it uses zippers, it uses all kinds of fun things and it's all doable. <laughs> so in the course, I promise that I will hold your hand and I will teach you step-by-step step how to make this beautiful bag and there will be no tears involved, I promise. So I hope to see you inside the course and I wish you happy sewing.